Hey guys, it's Michelle from Cozy Egg, and today is Monday, December 11th, 2017, and I believe this is episode 45. So, um, what's been going on since it's been like a month, almost exactly, since I recorded last? I did not intend to go so long without recording, but of course I was sick, then there was Thanksgiving, and then there were some other things that went on that I will talk about in a minute. Um, so yeah, I apologize that it's been so long, but here I am. Um, so I am mostly over being sick. I still have my cough. Some days it's better than others, um, but it's now basically a little over a month that I've had this, so I'm kind of weighing, do I go to the doctor, do I not go to the doctor, etc. Anyway, we'll see. But I feel fine, I just still have this cough, and I sound a little froggy still, so... Um, so, uh, actually, because it's been so long since I recorded, I actually had to go back and watch my last video, both parts of it, because I had zero recollection of what I showed you. So, um, I just finished doing that, and yeah, I looked really bad. <laughs> I sounded, <coughs> I sounded really bad too, so... Kudos to me for recording. Anyway, um, so I think I know what I showed you last time, and so everything that I show you this time should be net new. So, um, so what's been going on? So obviously, like I said, sick, and then Thanksgiving. I worked the Monday of Thanksgiving week, but then I was off the rest of the week, and so Eric and I actually spent a lot of time getting a lot of stuff done around the house and some projects and things like that which was much needed um and i basically needed that time away from work and everything for just kind of what i'm calling a hard reboot because i just needed to be away from everything to kind of step back and take a breath and get perspective on everything. So it was much needed and it was very productive. I mean, I did get, you know, time to stitch and all of that, um, but we got a lot of stuff done around the house too, which was really good because there was a lot of stuff that needed to get done. Um, but I did manage to squeeze in stitching with some friends and the actual day of Thanksgiving was like a no project, no work, work around the house, I mean, you know, kind of day. So we just sort of sat around and Eric made apple pancakes for breakfast, which we love. And um, we watched the Macy's Day Parade and Thanksgiving Day Parade, which we love. And then we watched some movies and just kind of hung out and I stitched and you know he worked on his laptop and whatever so it was a good day it was a relaxing day much needed so I think I've said that like 25 times now anyway you get the picture it was much needed so uh so Thanksgiving and then we do a annual kind of eggnog and dessert Kind of party every year and typically it's the first weekend in December but because the you know the first of December kind of fell at a weird time we moved it a week so typically we decorate like the weekend after Thanksgiving in order to have everything up and ready for our party but I think, I 
think pushing it a week screwed me all up because then we were decorating that first weekend of December but I had somehow in my mind exaggerated how much time I had and so and because I was still you know kind of dealing with not feeling great and all that it was kind of like oh we've got time to do that we've got time to do that don't worry about that Um, so anyway, so there was like a frantic weekend of trying to get stuff decorated. And then I had my holiday party for EGA, which is typically the day after our party. But since it was the weekend before our party, one of the two days that I was going to use to decorate was spent at the holiday party so yeah and then we had the Tudor Rose holiday party and so yeah kind of partied out at this time at this point um, because on top of that there was a work holiday party too that was this past Friday which it was good you know but work party so anyway um and because you know we're we're recently acquired it's new people and new company and you know, anyway all that you know office politics and stuff like that but it was nice they had good food they had a pretty christmas tree which i posted on instagram and people are like wow i love your tree and i'm like it's not my tree this is my tree one of my trees but anyway so, all that to say, I meant to record before now, things happen, but here I am. So, let me show you what I've been working on. So, I think last time we spoke, I was working on Dracula book cover, um, and I was doing that kind of through Dark 13. And then I mentioned, you know, I was kind of feeling like I just wanted to kind of throw all my plans out the window and just stitch on fall stuff and then stitch on Christmas stuff and stitch on whatever I felt like stitching on. So I kind of did that, which was good. Um, so the first thing that I picked up after I finished with um, Dark 13 stitching is like that week, I think Dark 13 was like a Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, whatever. Anyway, so the Monday of that week, which I think was the day that I recorded, um, I actually had a dream about stitching and I dreamed about Village at Hawkrun Hollow. So I decided to take that as a sign and get it out and work on it because I haven't worked on it since May when I worked on all my whips <laughs> so it's in this pretty fall bag um, which is a tulip pink print from the birds and the bees and this is her that laminate fabric so it's kind of like oil cloth um, it's really cool to use for project bags or other fun things and then there's tulip pink on the inside so and this is a Sylvia bag that she made me so I got this out to work on and I decided you know what I'd kind of gotten bogged down you know I was down here at the bottom working on block 12 hello wrinkles working on block 12 which is the cemetery block and I was just kind of just you know bogged down in the fill-in so I decided to jump back up to the top and start block two. So that is what I got done. So what I had originally done when I, I finished block one and then when I decided to jump down to block 12 is I did all this weird counting to try to make sure I was in the right place. It'll be a long time before we figure out if I am actually in the right place, but I think I am. 
but we'll know for sure in like 12 years when I finish this. So I had done, here's what I did. I did 10th stitch and then I crossed every 10th stitch so that I could count. So I did that, you know, kind of all the way down and left, you know, that one stitch in between each block. And so part of what I did when I started this was I actually went in and crossed all of those stitches, or actually I didn't have stitches over here because I was just counting down. So I did the top, the side, started on this side of the border, and I don't think I did anything at the bottom. Um, and I started down here with the, the fence and some of the green fill-in, and then I decided that's not a whole lot of fun, so let me come up here and do this bird and start at the top of the church and start with the words. So that's what I got done. Um, and I had fun working on this. And I basically worked on this that week, the week before Thanksgiving. Um, I'm glad I got it out. I enjoyed working on it. And I'm stitching this one just with DMC. My Shores of Hawk Run Hollow is in silks. Um, I know that they're uh, in the um, Let's All Move to Hawk Run Hollow group, um, which Abby started and which I'm the admin for. Um, the question gets asked all the time. You know, is there a big difference between stitching with the MPI versus stitching with DMC? What's everybody using? So on and so forth. So this one I'm using DMC. Um, Shores, I'm using silks. And what I decided to do on Shores, because, you know, it's silk, it's expensive, is anything that I needed more than one skein of, I went ahead and bought. So like the black for the outlines. I bought that and then I think there's a couple other colors like that blue for the water and maybe something else that needs more than one skein. So I bought those and then I bought the silks that I needed for just that first block. And I figured I will purchase as I need them. And since I started that in like, I don't know, 2007, 2008 and I'm only on block two, there's no rush to get the rest of the silks. So just something to think about if you want to do silks, you can buy them as you go. So I worked on Hawk Run Hollow and then I was reminded of my, another piece that I really wanted to work on that was kind of fall. So, I decided to get out my Primitive Wizard of Oz by Midsummer Night Designs, this one. And I actually am supposed to have already popped this in the mail to somebody that I'm passing the stash, but it's still here. So, I will try to get it in the mail soon. Anyway. So Midsummer Night Designs, I think this may be out of print, hard to find. I don't think she's designing anymore, which is why it's maybe hard to find. So I always associate the Wizard of Oz with Thanksgiving, probably because all growing up, every year they would play the Wizard of Oz on TV. So those two things are just linked in my mind. So I thought, what a perfect thing to work on the week of Thanksgiving is to work on my Primitive Wizard of Oz. And this is one of my Year of Whips pieces. So I decided to get it out and I worked on it. I really wanted to get it finished that week, but I didn't quite make it. But I finished it before the end of November. I actually think I finished it on the 29th. So here it is. 
So I did make some changes to this. So let me see if I can see what I'm showing you. Okay. So I did make a few changes. This is stitched in with Classic Colorworks and DMC. That's what it calls for. There was, there were a couple of crescent colors or maybe just one that for whatever reason I didn't have, even though I bought this, you know, I bought the pattern and the threads for it at the same time, but somehow or another I didn't get one of them. So uh, I think it was wavy navy and I ended up with just using a DMC for that. I just kind of used a navy blue and whatever. Um, I did make some color changes. So for the metallic, which is for the star and Glinda's crown and then a couple little sparkly things on her dress, it calls for the DMC metallic. Mm -mm. Nope. So I actually pulled a Krynic and I started using the Krynic and I didn't like it. I don't like, you know, thread that splits apart on me. That's just me. So I ditched that idea and raided one of my Chatelaine kits and pulled out Petite Treasure Braid. And that's what I used. And so one, it's leaps and bounds better than Krynic and it's sure better than DMC metallic and it's sparklier. So I wanted it to be sparkly and I wanted you to be able to see that sparkle. So I just used a silver petite treasure braid. So that was one of the changes I made. The other change that I made is that the green that it calls for, that all the letters are in, and some of the other stuff like the Emerald City, it called for Crescent Colors, Classic Color Works, Four Leaf Clover. And when I started stitching with that, it just didn't seem emerald green enough to me. So I actually pulled, I think it was Weeks Emerald and used that. And I liked it way better. So I switched out all my, and I, especially because there's so much green in this, I wanted a green that I liked. So I used Emerald for that. Um, and then I pretty much stayed, you know, inside the lines until I got down to the last little bit. So when I did this rainbow, at the very middle of it is purple. And I got to looking around and I'm like, there's no other purple in this. Like nowhere is that purple used again, which I thought was a damn shame. So I put it in myself. So the way that they had, the way that she had charted the wizard was to have a black hat with a green band and I think he was supposed to have, what was he supposed to have? Green coat, black pants, black buttons. So instead, I gave him green hat with a purple band, purple pants, purple buttons, black shoes. And I think he looks pretty cute. He may be confused with Cornelius Fudge, but I think he looks pretty cute. And I just really wanted to get that purple in there someplace else so that it's kind of balanced. Um, the witch, was charted with gray hair. So clearly I scrapped that and went with black hair. And then the Tin Man 
So the way that she charted the Tin Man was weird, I thought. Let me see if you can see this. So the way she charted it was basically like a person's face with the helmet around it. No. So what I did was I stitched his whole face that gray color and obviously made it narrower. Like I took off that whole outside line, that outside row of stitches. So his face was thinner and it looked more like the rest of the folks. But then is the top of his, the funnel on his, on the top of his head looked funny. So I had to kind of adjust that accordingly so that it all kind of looked like it went together. So, <coughs> and for some reason I was thinking I did one other thing that was different, but I'm not seeing anything else different. So, anyway, it was a super fun stitch. I don't know why the heck it took me so dang long to stitch it. Um, but I really love how it turned out. It's a really fun, cute piece. And I'm really happy with it. So, Primitive Wizard of Oz, Midsummer Night Designs. And I think I did this on 32 count linen. Um, I think that this is actually actually it may not be 32 count I think this is some of that gonder linen like my Dracula I think it may be 40 count yep because I used one strand of thread so yep so I'm quickly using up all of my gonder linen but anyway so that's my one finish um so I stitched that finish that up at the end of November. Look how fat this bag is. There's so much crap in here. <coughs> I made this bag myself. This is a Kate Spain fabric. I think it's from her line called Joy. She does the best Christmas fabrics. Um, and then the inside is from that same line. It's little snowballs. Isn't that cute? So, anyway, I worked on my green Santa, Birds of a Feather. I worked on him for Santa Sunday. Um, that Sunday after Thanksgiving, which was super fun. And I'm stitching him on 40 count weeks cocoa. He's so cute. I love him. So I worked on him and somewhere in here. Thought I had my little So I was going to show you his whole picture, but I don't see it. Okay, anyway, so I worked on that, and then I decided, oh, well, maybe I can, you know, quickly stitch up an ornament for the ornament exchange for Guild in, like, you know, a day. So... Spoiler alert, it didn't happen. So I decided to stitch this ornament from Catherine Theron, Theron Traditions. Um, Noel, you may, I stitched this last year um, and I ended up not going to the party because I had a bad migraine. It's, it's a freebie design, it's that. 
Um, if you want a copy, just send me a note. Anyway, um, I ended up not going, so I had this ornament ready to go, except my finishing, I kind of slapped it together at the last minute with a migraine, and so I thought, oh, I'll restitch it. Yeah, that didn't happen. And you may remember that I also stitched an ornament for um, EGA last year and then didn't get it done in time or whatever. And yeah, so that's the one I stitched for EGA last year, which I could have just finished this year and had an ornament to exchange, but And this one was from the Just Cross Stitch 2016 hands-on design Yuletide. You can see how she did it. So she did like two different fabrics with that one saying Yuletide on it. I just did it on one fabric. And I think it turned out really cute, but those leaves were bare. So anyway, I did that last year. So then after I decided that trying to stitch an ornament for the exchange two days before the exchange party was a futile effort. So I decided to get out. I feel like I'm all over the place. Am I all over the place? Take a moment. I've also started meditating, so I'm trying to put that into practice in my day-to-day -day moments. So then I was watching, what the heck is her name? I'll have to add it here because I don't remember what her dang name is. Anyway, I was watching her video and she was talking, she was showing some of her finishes and one of the finishes that she showed was this one, which is Jenny Bean's Christmas Sampler from Shakespeare's Peddler. And you probably all know who I'm talking about now, but I don't know who I'm talking about, but I can picture her in my head. So anyway, she mentioned this one and I was like, ah, I have that as a whip. I should get it out and work on it. So, I got it out and worked on it. So this is on 40 count vintage navy bean lakeside, which I think is what it calls for, probably. Yeah, that's exactly what it calls for. And then it calls for um, gas threads, which I'm using. So, here is how much I have done. So I basically had the house, the trees, and these little letters right here stitched. So I got these stitched, and then I started over here on this side. So not a ton of progress, but I got a little bit done, and I enjoyed working on it. So I basically worked on this. up until the beginning of last week. So I probably did, you know, two, three days on it. And enjoyed it. And then two things happened. So last Tuesday was the Tudor Rose holiday party where we did the ornament exchanges and um, that was fun. Lots of good ornaments to see. I always like seeing what everybody else stitches. <coughs> so we had that. Um, and when I, you know, when I got there last night, or last night, last week when I got there, we were also talking about our magic projects. And so if you remember from forever ago in January, 
or earlier because I think I talked about this last year and probably the year before but anyway um, the guild does uh, what we call our magic projects and magic stands for my annual good intentions contract and so at the January meeting you make a list of what you want to finish during the year and then at the end of the year you know if you have managed to accomplish those things usually you get some kind of little prize or something so my magic list this year I had four things on it and I tried to choose things that were also on my year of whips so one of them was the Papillon Creations Mystery Sampler, which is the piece that I picked up and finished for Eric to commemorate our 10 year anniversary, even though this year was 11. So I finished that one in April. The second piece that I had on there was Cuisine Dete, which obviously I just recently finished. Um, the third thing that is on there is Bay Sampler by the Work Basket, which I did work on during Mania, but I don't think I've worked on it since then. So obviously that one's not happening. And then the fourth thing that I put on there was Mystery Nine. We all know where that is. So um, a couple of us were heckling other people about their magic list and uh, Robert made the comment you still have three weeks you could get it done and that kind of stuck in my head and I thought you know what I could you know work on either Bay Sampler or Mystery 9 and even if I don't get it finished if I work on it for three weeks I could probably get a lot done so that was kind of you know what was in my head that night so rewind back to earlier in the day that same day so one of the groups that I'm in on Facebook one of the stitchers in that group said you know posted up and said hey have you guys seen about the seen the news about Martina Chatelaine designs and so I quickly jumped over to the Chatelaine support group on Facebook to unfortunately see the news that Martina had passed away unexpectedly on Tuesday so That was obviously fresh in my mind when I went to Guild and we started talking about, you know, what is and is not on our magic list, all that stuff, and me realizing that Mystery Nine is on there. Um, and it has been on my magic list several times, not all right in a row, but it has been on my magic list several times. <clears throat> And so during the day, I was kind of watching, you know, the messages come through on that group and so many, so many stitchers were sharing photos of their finished chatelaines or their, you know, whips um, as just sort of a tribute to Martina's huge talent um, and how heartbreaking it is that she's gone so um, many of us I think decided that that night was the night to get out our chatelaines and put some stitches in to them so 
I got out Mystery 9. And I worked on it that night. And I mean, honestly, just, just coming together with other stitchers and seeing other stitchers working on their chatelaines. was really moving so I got out mystery nine and I worked on it and that is all that I have worked on since last Tuesday um, obviously I had a bunch of stuff going on last week with parties and uh, getting ready for our party and all of that so my stitching time was a little slim but that's what I worked on so and I probably have more to say at some point about Martina and what a huge loss this is to our stitching community because she was truly so talented and I've talked about her work before and that the photos and even the you know the preview images that she puts out you know they just they don't do these pieces justice and if you've never seen a Chatelaine in person you cannot begin to imagine how breathtaking they are so I highly recommend you see one in person to really get the full effect. Video is pretty good, unless it's my video and then it's not really great, but <laughs> video is pretty good about showing you some of the sparkle and some of the texture and the depth to them, but there's just really nothing like seeing them in person. So, um, yeah. So I um, got out mystery nine and I'm still I'm using my rigged up <laughs> three-sided hue snap um, this bottom one uh, I, I, ha I had been using the long clamp Q snap side down here but I had to poke it out like this far because there are beads right here and then finally today today I got smart and said let me pull the small one off of my eight inch q-snap and use it down there so that it doesn't have to poke out this far brilliant so I do have this you know floppy business going on here but it is so much easier to work on this than it was on that scroll frame and maybe if my scroll frame actually fit my piece and I didn't have to kind of fold my sides under, different story. Because I did all of mis all of my midi mystery on a scroll frame and it was fine. So, yeah. So, here's what I did. So, I finished up the eyelets right here. I think I just had two left. And then I did all the eyelets in here and got that finished up. And then I started on this little pool, the corner pool, and um, I've got that brown, and then I have a light blue and kind of a medium blue in there that I got finished last night. So, um, and here's what that pool will look like. So I have kind of all the fill-in to do. And then there is, there's beads, and there's metallic in there also, and that Florida Lee is over one. So, but I feel like I'm making okay progress, and it's been good to work on this. It was much needed, not only because you know I sort of had that revelation of 
hey, I do still have three weeks that I can work on this. So there's that. And then of course, with Martina's passing. Um, and I just, I had the thought that, I don't know if I've shown this to you, but this is what the whole piece looks like. This is not my piece, obviously. This is somebody's, one of the stitchers that finished hers. Um, and don't pay a whole lot of attention to that center because there are many options for how to do the center. Um, and I haven't quite figured out how I want to do it. There's like a stitch center, but then we have pearls and that little sun um, deal to put in there. So what I wanted to show you is, let me take this out of here so that there's not so much glare. So, corner pool, and I have my little swirlies here done. I have two corners that still have to be beaded for those swirlies. My artichoke bed is done. I have a center pool done at the top, but I've got center pools, three more center pools to do. And once I finish, you know, this corner pool, there's two more down at the bottom. So, I wanted to show you what's left. So I have these little tree, bush, vine things that are in here that go right here in between the swirls and this hedge. So I have those to do and I have a sneaky suspicion those are gonna be kind of finicky. And then, little plants in here. There are these stairs on all four sides. And then out here there are these sort of urn looking things. And then of course once I get all of that done and beaded, then I have to do all my crystals because I did not do them as I went so that they wouldn't catch. And here's Tutmos. So, that's what I'm working on. Um, if, do not step on that. If you are not a member of the Shadowland Support Group on Facebook, uh, you may have seen the news as it was posted on Martina's website by her webmaster, um, as well as um, Cindy from European Cross Stitch. <coughs> I always want to say European Crossroads because there used to be the shopping center here called European Crossroads, but I think it's European Cross Stitch, whatever that place is that kits up the stuff. So, um, I believe it's been posted in both of those places too. <coughs> and Martina's site is up. You can purchase through the site. Um, particularly, you know, obviously for things that are instant downloads. But there are so many people that are trying to get to the site and purchase things that it is slow and there are folks that have encountered some download issues. If you do, then, um, you know, there are folks that you can reach out to. 
but just be aware that her family has other things to deal with right now. So, um, there are some things that are on hold because we don't know the status of, you know, those designs and if they were fully complete or not. So I think there are some in-flight um, mysteries that that we don't know are complete. There is the big mystery next year, which is the Versailles mystery, which of course I wanted to do as a companion to Mystery 9. They've, I think, pulled that, you know, or put that on hold so that you can't purchase it until they determine if it, you know, if the design is complete and charted or not. Um, so the best place to go to ask if you have questions is the Shadowland support group. And um, Cheryl is the admin of that group and she has asked um, Annette from Annette's Acre to also step in and help um, administer the group because it it was Cheryl and Martina um, prior to that. So Annette has stepped in to help in the interim since there is obviously a lot of activity in the group right now with people asking questions and asking to join and all that good stuff. So anyway, such a loss but I have found comfort in working on this piece I have found a lot of comfort in working on this piece with others that are working on shadow lanes as well um, so Anyway, just, you know, that's my thoughts. So, um, what's next? I would love to take a little video and show you some of my holiday decorations. I may or may not be able to include that in this video. If I am not able to, I may just upload it as a separate video. So if you're not interested in that, you don't have to look at it. But I just thought it might be kind of fun. So, um, I, I watched Emily's video where she talked about doing that, where she and Jim did the holiday tag that I think was in um, a group. Um, I don't know which group was doing that, but anyway, I just thought it might be fun to just kind of look. And of course, I decided that I had to change where I sit so that you could see the tree, so I had a nice background. So anyway, so I am gonna try to record again before the end of the year on the off chance that that doesn't happen. Um. I am also thinking quite a bit about next year. I mean, as far as the end of the year goes, my plan is to just continue with Mystery 9. That's what I'm wanting to stitch on right now, and I'm, I'd like to see how far I can get with it in the next few weeks. So that's my plan. Um, the Tudor Rose meeting is on the 2nd, so... <coughs> It's not like I have kind of, you know, a little bit of leeway time to get in, you know, my magic finish, but I got two of the four done, so I think that was good. I'm pleased with that. And two of the four were pieces from 2006, 2007. So I'm very pleased with that. So my plan is to just work on Mystery Nine the rest of the year unless, you know, 
something else calls my name, but I'd really just like to kind of stick with this and focus on it. Um, as far as next year, I've had a couple of different thoughts about next year. Um, you know, I did the year of whips this year, although I was kind of a disaster when it comes to, you know, being a pen pal and all of that. I just, uh, yeah, sorry. Um, but I was glad that I focused on some pieces. I got some pieces done. I got some pieces worked on, which are all good things. So I may do some sort of year of whips again next year, maybe. Um, one of the things also that I'm looking at is as much fun as I had starting a whole bunch of things during Mania and during Dark October. You know, once the <laughs> Once the excitement wears off, what I'm left with is a whole bunch of whips, which I'm really trying to cut down on. Um, because the bottom line is, having a ton of whips stresses me out. I know this. I try to ignore that and, you know, have fun and play along and start a bunch of crap, but it stresses me out. So, I am probably going to do some sort of something with regard to working on some of my whips. At the moment, I'm feeling like, you know, Mystery 9, assuming that I don't get it finished this year, is going to be a focus piece for next year until it's finished. I would really like to work on some of my other chatelaines, my Egypt garden that I just started, which I am happy that I started that for my birthday. I am super happy about that. Um, I'd like to work on it. I've got a couple more chatelaines. I have my mermaid treasure box, you know, I'd really like to work on some of those. So, I may, you know, try to do kind of a, a little bit of a different year of whips where I have a, you know, a Chatelaine kind of mixed all in there throughout the year. Um, my initial thought, my initial big plan for 2018 was that I was going to try to do some things that are new to me and try to learn some new techniques and try some new things like gold work or stump work or you know things like that. I would still like to do that, but I'm not willing to start something new right now. I'm just not. So, that may just get on hold, get put on hold for right now. I have a friend that's really um, pushing for me to work on my Amy Mitten Winders Keeper so that we can work on finishing them together. Um, I may do that. That's certainly one of the ones that's, you know, that I'm thinking about wanting to work on. And it would it's a whip, but it would also kind of fulfill that, you know, wanting to get some new skills under my belt. So, so that's kind of where I'm at and what I'm thinking. But yeah, I'm just, um, I'm content to work on my Chatelaine right now. That's really what it boils down to. I'm so happy that I worked on some fall stuff and I worked on some Christmas stuff, um, all of which were whips. 
and I got a finish out of it. So that makes me happy. And now if I can just, you know, focus on some getting this thing stitched. And I think now that I have it, have this whole situation figured out with having it on my Q-snap and being able to work on it like that where it's more manageable, I think this solves my big problem that I was having and why I hadn't worked on it in so long. <clears throat> because it had just become unwieldy. So I'm happy about that. Um, the one caveat that I may throw out there is <clears throat> that I'm looking very seriously at Brittany's Guardians of Notre Dame mystery sale that she's doing for 2018. And she has, she's released, you know, kind of what the, the outline looks like and it's done in the shape of the rose window. <clears throat> And then I'm assuming within each of those lobes is, will be one of the chimera or gargoyles, etc., that are on Notre Dame Cathedral. So, being an art history major and being that I have a huge love of Paris as well as you know, things that are kind of weird and creepy. Um, <laughs> he's like right here. So, and I keep throwing this on the floor. <coughs> anyway, I'm seriously considering doing that so which would be a new start I realize I'm gonna think about it I'll get back to you so I think all the parties are done for the year the rest of the year will hopefully be kind of quiet and I know that Houston and Corpus Christi got snow. We got no snow here. It did drop drastically in temperature. I mean, like it was 85 on Sunday and on Monday it was like 30. So, which, you know, that may be some of why I still have this cough hanging around is because our weather is just so weird right now. Um, but anyway, so We'll see what I get done. Hopefully I can record again before the end of the year and show you kind of my progress and where I'm at on Mystery 9. Um, please, 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 if you feel moved to stitch on a, on a Chatelaine, just as a memory of Martina and her talent, so. <clears throat> Like I said, I may talk about that further down the road, but obviously the little bit that I talked about it was too much. So anyway, all right. I am in the process also of getting my stinking blog updated with all the show notes from the past several videos that I've done. <clears throat> I still need to do my last video but all the rest of them are now uploaded. So if you had questions or comments or concerns or whatever, all the show notes are there now. <clears throat> I have been very behind on doing that. So behind, I think, that somebody actually unsubscribed from my newsletter that notifies people when, they have, when I have a blog post update. Sorry. Anyway. Um, so, I will have that last one updated now that I've rewatched it so I know what I talked about. 
and get that posted. I'll have this up and then I may do a little Christmas walkthrough so that you can see some of the stuff. So anyway, uh, I'm Cozy Egg on Instagram and on YouTube and all of the places. My blog is CozyEgg.CozyEggDesigns.com, which I will have a link to um, in the description of the video. It's also at the end of the video. And um, if you go to my site, you can, you know, then from there, you can get out to my Twitter, out to Goodreads, out to all of that stuff. So anyway. All right. Well, um, I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday season if I don't talk to you. And thank you so much for watching and subscribing and commenting and liking and all that good stuff. So, bye.